Hey, welcome back. In the book Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, Robert Persick gives a great account of a moment on his journey when his friend's motorcycle handlebars are loose and Robert offers to shim them up with an aluminum beer can. The friend declines the repair and the story goes on, but with a little bit of explanation, we come across a very important idea. We select materials and product design because they offer up a particular set of qualities that match closely with the concept. It isn't that we make things out of metal because metal is strong and conductive. It's because metal most closely matches the strength and conductivity that we need the idea to have realized in the world with the materials we have available to us, which in that case may have been to be strong or conductive. We make rooms that we want to be quieter with more surface area with things such as wood and foam panels. It doesn't matter that these things are wood and foam, it's that they have more surface area than other materials and diffuse the sound more quickly. We make cork boards out of cork because it has the properties of being relatively cheap, self-healing, and organic. We used to make classic toys out of wood because wood is readily available and relatively cheap and it's a relatively safe material for kids to put in their mouths and it takes paint really easily. We make windows out of glass, not because glass is dangerous when broken, but because glass offers a strong, clear boundary between us and the outside world. An absolutely fabulous book to pick up and read more about materials and design is Materials and Design by Mike Ashby and Kara Johnson. In it, they cover the detailed qualities of materials and how they relate to one another. Things like affordability, recyclability, and manufacturability are all discussed in depth. But what about you and your project? Certainly you can't always afford the most expensive silicone impregnated polymers and high temperature plastics for every project. Or can you? By listing out the functional needs of your products, we can quickly determine if a product really calls for the most expensive block of all time, or if you can get away with using ABS or perhaps even epoxy. Let's look at a quick example. Let's say I have a pair of headphones that calls for the form to be slightly malleable, yet maintain the structure of the headphones to adjust to fit, and also be waterproof. Let's break down that requirement list. Flexible, waterproof, structure. Well, off the top of my head, I could guess that something like butyl rubber might be a good start, but because these are headphones, something that is more ubiquitous with audio and skin might be a better fit. How about silicone or polyurethane? It's waterproof, great form memory, and is definitely flexible. Urethane can be made in various grades of flexibility. We can design gumminess of the silicone depending on the form requirements. The design might not need the silicone parts to hold all of the form. We could rely on some semi-flexible urethane to take on some of the work as well. A simpler example. You're in the woods at daytime on a sunny day and you need to flag down help. All you have is a dead flashlight without batteries. What could you do? Well, we would want something reflective, right? So that we could shine the sun at anybody who's coming by. So why not take the lens out of the flashlight and use the reflective properties to reflect the sun and make a great signal? It's never about the materials, it's about the qualities of those materials that make a great design. Send me some of your thoughts. Do you make things out of wood because you have to? Or because you want the object to take on characteristics of wood? Or because the qualities of wood make your project go from idea to reality. What about plastic? Do you have a favorite material to work with and why? Let me know. Send me some of your thoughts on Twitter and Instagram and I'll post some of the best insights and projects. Thanks so much. Have a great day.